first leopard piece was, but I do recall very distinctly that when I launched Man Repeller, my Twitter, my Twitter bio read, not leopard, not interested. <laughs> and, and, and one of my most liked tweets of all time when I was still just working alone was leopard print is a neutral, which I really do genuinely believe I do is too. that it matches with everything. Yeah, when we design with it, it really goes with everything. And I, I think, I don't think our Kate Spade girl has not met a leopard print she doesn't like. I would agree. So it's, yeah, it is a mainstay and it is a neutral. It, it really does go with everything. I think it's because the base colors are pretty neutral themselves. Yeah, so. that's a good point. That's yeah. a technical point. Technical. I guess that's why you do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Leopard's very close to my heart because actually my first piece of leopard was when I first came to New York. And I think it was probably a, like a, a chubby leopard yeah, coat, sort of vintage leopard coat made out of that sort of fabric. Oh, and I absolutely you know? loved that. I was coming to New York for my first time. So that reminds exciting. me of a leopard print coat that I bought when I was studying abroad in Paris. I bought it from Zara and it was like 50 euro or something. And oh my God, I loved it so much. I wore it under this striped uh, like linen jersey blend shirt with shoulder pads that was from Sandro at the time. <laughs> and I wore it every time I went out and I started to date someone while I was abroad in Paris. And this is before I started Man Repeller, like six months before I launched Man Repeller. And every time I wore that coat, he was like, you look like animal explode. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that, I know, you don't get it, but I get it. <laughs> I think the most bold or the boldest, boldest women uh, really allow for men to play supporting roles in their lives. It sounds like that a little bit with your aunt who used to go to Australia with rock star boyfriends because it was still about her. But it was, oh, it was all about yeah. her. Yeah, she set up a fashion company and it was all about shearling coats and my yeah. boyfriend, yeah, just had to follow her around and <laughs> sort of carry everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was, I was. Um, I really I'm appreciate a woman who like absorbs a man's life and makes it about her only. <laughs> you know, I have to say um, that one of my, the women that I admire the most and so bold was Josephine Baker. She was sort of in the 20s, she came from America, she went to Paris, and she was just incredible. She, you know, a lot of people only know her as the entertainer with the banana skirt and the crazy <laughs> dancing in the clubs of Paris. She had a pet cheetah called Chiquita, and I love the fact she used to take it to all the clubs and it used to terrorize all the guys in the orchestra and most of the <laughs> audience as well. But I just love what she stood for. I mean, she, um, she adopted 12 children, she worked for the resistance, she did so many things in her life from just that early career and really breaking out. She broke all of those rules when nobody really knew those rules were sort of there to be broken. So I admire her and I love heroines like Amelia Earhart, they're like the first woman to fly around the world, Karen Blix and these women who are these big adventurers. I, I sort of love the fact that sort of the world was their oyster and they just took it on. They didn't know where they were going, what they were doing, but it was just like big bold moves. So those are my sort of ladies. I think strength is like knowing what you think and being able to say it. People respect you for it. They respect you for you being you and having the courage to sort of do that and taking a leap of faith, faith and believing in yourself. You know, if I didn't believe in myself, I'd never have come to America. It was a huge step to go from Europe where I'd worked all over to coming to the States, which seemed like an awful long way away, and it is. There's a big time difference, and it's a long way away when it's friends and family's birthday and everything else like that. So it's sort of, it's, it's a big leap, and for me that was very courageous and brave to do. Definitely uh, new things, newness motivates me a lot, but also interacting with people more than anything. I really get my energy from uh, meeting new people and communicating with them and learning about their stories and their vulnerabilities and uh, I just love good conversation more than most things. Right. I have to say what motivates me is travel. It's seeing something new. It's watching, watching the world go by. It doesn't mean travel. Travel can just be from my home in Brooklyn to work. It's amazing what you can see on the streets of New York <laughs> that inspire from pink furry gorillas in the underground and all sorts of things. <laughs> it, you know, it's just keeping your eyes open and just being aware of things and enjoying the, the journey versus just trying to always get to the end point, you know. I think it, and it's, it's enjoying those twists and turns as well and the people you meet along the way that, and the stories you hear and the things that you can do with those stories. It's just, you know, it's having an open mind for me.
Peeling back the layers is really important, not taking anything at face value, continuing to inquire, just like, like eh, curiosity. Eh, eh. Yeah, like get yeah. really deep in there. Like, oh, you don't think it's gonna suit you? Try it on, yeah. you know? Or you get a no from someone, ask why. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been doing this thing for the last couple of months where I ask myself every morning when I'm getting out of bed, what is getting me out of bed that morning? Like, well, why am I getting out of bed today? And, and maybe this works for me because I've gone through bouts of not being able to get out of bed. Right. So I ask myself why I'm getting out of bed and then I do something related to whatever that answer is every day. And I feel like that is an, that's an interesting way to live because yeah. the only way that your life is going to be interesting is if you're interested <laughs> yes. in it. Yes. Yes. Um, and that, that's another lesson that I've learned that's really, really important. It's so easy to get caught up in what other people are doing and to see their happiness and to absorb their happiness as uh, possibly the driver of your own happiness, even if that's not true. And so like learning narrow focus and recognizing what really speaks to me from like the the inner trenches of my guts has been really helpful. For me, it's being open-minded, it's being interested, you know, it's reading things, things you wouldn't normally do, or opening something up that you wouldn't normally open, or going in a door that you wouldn't normally go in. It's just being a little courageous and brave about those things, willing to discover things, try things. You know, even if it's just trying on something, for me, it's like forcing myself to try it. I was like, that will never suit me. And it's like, go on, go on, try it on. And you're like, oh! You know, and it's a whole new you. I tend to be a quite self-aware person, and I'm in my head all the time, which I suppose we all are in our heads all the time. Um, I'm able to determine or, or quite clearly see where the lags and trouble is, you know? So if at work my problem is resilience or worthlessness, I push myself to email someone I wouldn't otherwise email, you know? So that today, for example, was Bob Sauerberg, who's the CEO of Condé Nast. And um, with the getting out of bed in the morning, because I've gone through bouts of not being able to and, and, that, and having that be so you know, soul crushing and depleting for me, uh, number one, it's grateful to come out of, or it feels great to come out of a haze, but also pushing yourself to recognize why, you're com why you've come out and what you're grateful for um, has been really helpful in maintenance. For me, it's taking a moment and taking a time to pause and what, you know, and I think it's my team and doing what I do. It's like constantly, what's the next thing? You know, and I do get bored easily. So it's like, how do I keep myself entertained and occupied and moving on? And it's just sort of seems to be natural. You know, it's like, what's the next thing? What can I do better? I'm very bad at sitting back and having a moment going, oh, that, well, that went well. I'm always like, well, what did I do yeah. wrong? What could I do better? You know, I don't listen to the praise. I only see the little bit in the article that says what I didn't do right or whatever. So I guess that's what drives me and keeps me up all night, just sort of, I'm not really a worry, worrier, but you know, it, it, it bothers me and it gets me and I just want to be, a, you know, perfect. No one's perfect, you know, you have to look at the, you know, the imperfections are actually really good. They're what, they're what people make people human and interesting. I guess for me, it's always been a dress. It just makes my life so easy. I love a good dress. And I love the way now you can like, you can dress it up, put sneakers with it, and mm -hmm. it doesn't feel too special. I love running around the city in a dress and sneakers. Go to piece in my wardrobe for a punch of confidence. Always a jacket, some version of a jacket. There are two in particular that I'm thinking about. One is a utility jacket that's actually quite similar to this one. It's like the shape is kind of swingy. Um, I just like the way that it falls on me and suits me. I, I like the way my upper body looks when I wear it. Um, I tend to wear a lot of gold necklaces with it, so it allows me to accessorize. And uh, this other tweed jacket with um, a leather cage over here. When I wear that jacket, I just feel like the most interesting and expensive and thoughtful <laughs> version of myself. It's so, it is, it is wild <laughs> what a jacket can do to you.